and welcome. My name is Shireen Richter, Laughter and Happiness Professor, and welcome to the Natura Day Today series of talks. Today I'm going to be talking about pivoting happiness. What does pivoting happiness even mean, and how do we find happiness in these challenging times that we are currently living in? How do we make every day a really happy day? We've never been taught how to be happy. We've never been taught how to find happiness or bring it into our lives. I'm going to share with you some amazing, scientifically proven techniques and tricks. I call them the double A happiness tips to help you bring happiness into your life. Because happiness is not something that just happens to us. Happiness is something we have to work at. And we can only work at it if we know how to. Aristotle says that happiness is the holy grail of mankind. He says that every single thing that we do in our lives, in some way, is done in order to bring us a level of happiness. So whether it is that we work to get money so we can put a roof over our heads, so we can feed ourselves and feed our families, whether we have friendships to bring more social connection into our lives, whatever it is, whether we exercise, Anything that we do really is to bring us more inner happiness. But we're living in a world of COVID. We are living in an upside down world. We're living in a world where the things that used to make us happy um, are not accessible to us anymore. We can't really go and have big parties. We can't go to the theater. We can't really go to movies we don't feel safe. Going out in a big group of people for dinner, going shopping, the things that we found happiness in in the past are things that are difficult for us to do. And so we all find ourselves in a situation where we're feeling anxious, we're unsure, we wake up in the morning and we're not sure what the day is going to bring. We are never really sure where we're going to land up and we keep hoping to get back to normal. Everybody says when we get back to normal, the truth is we never know if we're going to get back to normal. And this may be our new normal. So we have to find happiness within ourselves. Happiness is not something that we can find out there. Happiness is not something that someone else can bring to us. We have to choose to be happy and we have to bring that happiness into our lives. The problem is we have no idea. And that's why we can find ourselves feeling anxious and scared and afraid and, and all these negative emotions that swim around us and, and keep us not reaching our potential and feeling amazing every morning. My talk is going to show you how to recapture happiness into your life. Um, I have two tips, which I call the double A happiness tips, which is attitude and action. And by using these two things, which have been scientifically proven to create physiological and biochemical shifts in the body and the brain, we can change the way we think, we can change the way we feel, and we can bring more happiness into our worlds. If you look at people who go to university or go to school, we want to get them a trick, or we want to become an accountant, or we want to become a hairdresser, we have to go and learn how to do that. And we learn how to do it and we become excellent at what we do. What we really want in life is to be excellent at happiness. But no one's ever told us. So how do we bring more happiness into our worlds? I'm going to start by telling you that it's choice. Having a happy attitude is a choice. Now you may be watching this and saying, it's great she can say that. But really, I'm living in a world where I may have lost my job. I am under financial pressure. Um, my, I haven't seen my parents. My kids are going through stress at school because they're at school, then they're not at school. There are so many issues that we have in our world that make us think, it's impossible for me. It's great for you to say, but how do I walk around being happy? Here's how we do it. Choice is creation. Every single moment of every single day, we are choosing. We are choosing how to act, how to dress, what to say. We may not be consciously aware of it, but we are making those choices. And one choice adds to another choice, which adds to another choice. 
Each moment we choose is a moment in time. And those moments add up to a minute. Then they add up to 30 minutes, to an hour, to a day. And that becomes our life. And what we don't realize is our life is made up of all those little moments of choices. So the first thing we need to do is we need to wake up and choose happy. And what will happen when you wake up and choose happy is you'll get out of bed and bash your toe on the corner of the bed. And you'll go to the bathroom and brush your teeth and you'll be all dressed and ready to go and spill toothpaste everywhere. And what you have to keep saying to yourself is, I choose happy because life is going to keep happening. And we have to keep turning ourselves to saying, I'm not going to let that affect me. Is it even worth it? Now tell Ben Shahar, who's a Harvard professor who ran the most successful uh, positive psychology courses at Harvard. He did a study and he said, it is possible to choose happiness without it being fake because you can never be anyone but you. So if you say, if I act happy, I choose to have a positive attitude and I act happy, I'm faking it. And he says, no, you can never fake who you are. Inside of you, inside of me, is the happy Shireen, the sad Shireen, the cross Shireen, the anxious Shireen, the worried Shireen. But which Shireen am I choosing to show the world? And we all know we can do this because how many times have you been having an argument with someone at home and the doorbell goes or the phone rings and you're having a screaming match and you have to open the door and you go, Hi, welcome, how are you? Or you're having a screaming tantrum with someone on the phone or crying your heart out and, and somebody else calls you and you answer hi. That's not fake. That is you. It's just you making a choice to present a different you to the world. How do we get to laugh every single day? Well, we know we can go to gym for our physical body, but laughter is exercise for our souls for our emotional, mental bodies. The brain can't tell the difference between real and fake laughter. So whether I'm laughing because I've heard a funny joke or I'm just laughing for the sake of laughing, the brain doesn't know and it still releases all these amazing chemicals or drugs, natural drugs as I call them, and they flood your system and literally instantly you get to feel better. Now, people may wonder, this is really ridiculous, and how do you just laugh? Well, you fake it. The idea is, fake it till you make it. So what we do is, we have a whole lot of exercises where we fake the laughter, so we perform the physical action as if we were really laughing, and what that does is we do it with the intention of getting the brain to release these drugs. These exercises are simple. They can be done with your family. They can be done with a friend. They can be done over the phone. They can be done by yourself. But here's where your choice comes in. You have to wake up every morning and choose to actually do this. And you only need one or two minutes a day. You really don't need more than that. And what this will do for you is it will not leave you walking around feeling like a crazy person, but it will leave you feeling strong inside. It will leave you feeling resilient inside with the ability to potentially be able to cope with what the day is gonna bring. So as an example, you're gonna wake up in the morning, bash your toes, spill your toothpaste, uh, drop your coffee on your pants, and you're going to keep choosing happy. And then I'm going to share with you an example of how we use one of these exercises in order to fake the laugh. Now, if the entire time that we are doing this, you are thinking, this is the biggest load of nonsense. I feel ridiculous. I feel stupid. It's okay because the brain cannot tell the difference. And what do we want? Natural drugs. So that's what we're going to get. Now, the second thing that you have to remember when you're doing these laughing exercises is that the louder you fake it and the harder you laugh, the more drugs you get. So if you say, I'm going to do this exercise and you go, this is so stupid, <laughs> you're not going to get very many drugs. But if you really laugh loudly, you oxygenate your body, what will happen 
is you will get your brain flooding your body with drugs. Another thing is studies have shown that two minutes of a hearty belly laugh has the same cardiovascular effect as 10 minutes in an, on an exercise bike in a gym. So people, you can laugh yourself a six pack. That's incentive enough. Right, how do we do this? So you can do this on your own. It's called cell phone laughter. Or you can phone a friend and do it. And I actually had a friend, we were called laughing buddies, that if we were having a bad day, one of us would phone the other. We wouldn't even speak. We'd go, I need to laugh. We'd take our phones. And while you're watching, you're welcome to do this with me. Just get rid of that voice in your head that's going, this is stupid, I feel silly, because what do we want to do? We know science is correct in saying we're going to feel better, and that's the action. That's what we want to do. So we're going to take our pretend phones, or we're going to take our real phones, and all we're going to do is start with a little giggle, and we're going to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, the nice thing is when you do it with somebody, we have mirror neurons in our brains. And so when we laugh, even if we're faking it, and somebody hears that laughter, they will then immediately just start giggling or laughing without even knowing what they're laughing at because we mirror one another's emotions. And I'm sure you've experienced that if you walk into a room and there's people laughing, or you walk into a conversation and people are laughing, you'll smile a little, or maybe you will just have a little giggle and you won't even know why you're doing it. In the same way, just remember that if you're in a bad mood, if you're sad, if you're angry, if you're depressed, people can mirror that and you have the effect of spreading that negativity to other people. So here's how we do it. You phone a friend. You go, we're going to laugh together. You're speaking on the phone with your friend. Put the phone to your ear and you start with a giggle. And you make the giggle louder and louder and louder. So we go... <laughs> and we feel so stupid. And then we go, <laughs> and we feel even more ridiculous. And then we make it a huge laugh and we try and do this for at least a minute. <laughs> and the silliness of what you're actually doing may even really turn out into a laugh. But even if the entire time you're sitting there going, this is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe that I'm sitting here and doing this. Just know that the effects are massive. Before I end and pull it all together for you and, and make it real and practical, what I'd like to do is share a personal story where you'll really get to understand how I was able to use this in my life and maybe many of you will be able to relate and be able to use this in your own lives. One thing I've learned about speaking and teaching happiness is that you have to live it. And this was a lesson that I really learned and my son was the biggest teacher. My mother, who was my best friend, my mentor, my world, was diagnosed with stage four inoperable lung cancer. And she was really sick and she had to have an operation where they literally had to cut open her throat and get a sample from her lung. It was a really big operation. We were all really worried about it. And at that time, I had two laughter workshops booked, one straight after the other at one o'clock, and my mother's operation was scheduled for one o'clock. I just thought, how is this possible? I know I'm supposed to make people happy. I know that's my job. That is what I do. But I felt like my whole world was falling apart. How was I possibly going to stand in front of hundreds of people? How was I going to speak to them about happiness and pretend to be happy because, you know, there goes that fake thing again, and actually laugh when I wasn't sure what was going to happen to my mom? So that night, the night before, I came home and I was having dinner in my kitchen with my kids. And my oldest son, who was 19 at the time, said to me, Mommy, why are you crying? I was sobbing my eyes out. And I said, you know what? I think God's playing a sick joke on me. How am I supposed to go and stand up in front of hundreds of people, make them feel happy and laugh with them when I know my mom's having surgery? How am I supposed to do that? 
And my son said something very profound, which has changed the course of my life. He said, Mommy, if you want to stand in front of people and you want to tell them what to do to make themselves resilient and happy, he said, you have to live what you teach. He said, and this is your lesson. No matter how sad you feel and no matter what you're going through, you need to arrive, you need to show up, and you need to do the best that you can and then you'll be able to say with confidence, I've lived this. And so the next day came and I was feeling terrible. And I left my mom in the hospital. I left my dad and my sister there who were both a wreck and got in the car and cried the entire way to my client. I arrived at my client definitely not looking like the happiness professor with big red swollen eyes, tears pouring down my cheeks. And said, I'm arrived. I've arrived, I'm the happiness person. Didn't really look too convincing. To cut a long story short, I stood up and I thought, I'm going to do this for me because I need strength. I need resilience. Am I feeling happy? No. Do I want to laugh? No. And I told the group of people what was going on and I said, because of that, I'm going to laugh as hard as I possibly can. And I'm going to smile as much as I possibly can because I need to feel okay inside. I need that inner resilience and strength. And so we did that. What was so interesting for me is that when I got back to the hospital, I wasn't laughing. I wasn't running up and down the hospital corridors, hysterical and feeling happy. But I was together. I was composed. I felt like I could cope with what I had to deal with. And when my mom came out of surgery and she needed help, my dad was a wreck, but I was strong enough to be able to give her the help that she needed, to give her the support that she needed. That's when it dawned on me. We've conditioned ourselves that being happy is silly and stupid. We've conditioned ourselves that speaking negatively is great. How are you? Oh, I'm feeling terrible. And that's okay. When you say to someone, how are you feeling? And they go, I'm amazing. You think, are they crazy? But that is how we should be. That is how we should be living in the world because that is what will give us the resilience. That is what will give us the happiness in our everyday lives. That is what will give us the strength to carry on every single day despite COVID, despite losing a job, despite anything that is going on around us. We can only cope and deal if we're the best version of ourselves. So I'm going to just end by saying, remember the two A's. Attitude and action. Act happy. Acting happy makes you feel happy. Make that choice and have that attitude. The second thing is action. You have to actually do it. It's not going to happen by lying on the bed watching TV. You have to decide and you have to do the laughter. Walk with your chin up. Smile at people. Put a little swing in your step. Make those tiny little changes. And the world that you're living in will no longer exist. And what will show up for you will be a whole new world filled with resilience and happiness and inner calm and blessing. So to end off, my wish and prayer for all of you out there is to go out and be smile millionaires because that is the most valuable millionaire that you can be. Thank you.